The Marlins have lost six straight, getting swept by the Pirates and the Phillies coming into this series tonight. I had an appearance this weekend. I paid for the lineup, so it's fine. Thank, you, thank uh, you, Ronnie. John, man, you can see his three starts, 0-2 so far, that high ERA, the hits. Walks are kind of alarming at nine, but, you know, he has not pitched well, but he had a good game against his Florida team. Who can forget that game he pitched two seasons ago? Probably his best game as a pro. Here's the Mets defense brought to you by Alexis Sheffield, Beltron, and Church. In the outfield, right, Reyes Castillo and Tatis gets the start at first base with the injured hip to Delgado. And Omir Santos, very interesting, his third consecutive start behind the plate. Emilio Bonifacio will lead things off for the Marlins. The last time the Mets saw Bonifacio, he had taken the league by storm. He was hitting 583 on 14 for 24 through the first five games of the season with nine runs scored. Since then, Back to earth. Six hits and 50 at bats, and he takes a strike. Well, they say what he's been doing is that he was getting so many early hits, got a little confidence, and started swinging at some pitches out of the strike zone. Now they're trying to get him, you know, to fake that bunt, swinging only strikes. Confidence is a funny thing. You, you yeah. want to have it, but maybe not too much. There of you it. go. John Main trying to get his season in gear after back to back poor starts. John Baker on deck, and Bonifacio up there looking and takes a strike one and two. I like it so far, don't you? Three straight fastballs from Maine as he comes out pumping that fastball. He's always had the best success when he does that. The defense is pretty straight up. Of course, right is in. A little back here with two strikes. Just off the corner to Bonifacio, and it's two and two. John, in his last start against St. Louis, gave up five runs and seven hits over five and two thirds. Most alarmingly, he walked five. Bonifacio fouls it back as Maine continues to throw the fastball. Walks have been a problem up and down the Mets pitching staff. You expect it from Oliver Paris to a certain extent. You don't expect it from John Mayne. Well, John Mayne is usually when he's at his best, he's very aggressive in the strike zone. Really starts pumping that fastball in. Perez has that strikeout pitch, so sometimes he can come back from it. Well, interesting that Mayne continues to attack with fastballs because we noted in his last start that and this is a guy when he's had his greatest success as a Met. Up and down the lineup the first time around. He'd throw fastball after fastball and get off to fast starts mm. virtually every game. As Bonifacio lifts one to left, and Sheffield is there for the first out. Oh, drops the ball. He dropped it, and Bonifacio races to second. Sheffield right there, and wow. The black hole in left field gets a little wider. Well, very interesting. As that ball got close, and watch that glove gets right in front of his face and just clicks off the end of his glove. Not a way to start. Turned his head as that ball came off his glove. Well, it's it's remarkable, isn't it? Yes, it is. I mean. That's like the routine fly ball that Daniel Murphy dropped in Florida that cost Santana a game. There's John Baker bouncing one toward the middle, shuffling over to his right is Castillo. So an advancing ground out by Baker moves Bonifacio over to third. Oh, and by the way, Bonifacio is one of the fastest guys in baseball. He's got to be on third. Yes. Base. Well, he was not running, so that's what happens. John Baker there for the Marlins. Uh, they love the way he's been playing. That nice ground ball to the right side advances the runner. Playing winning baseball. So now Bonifacio at third with one out, and Hanley Ramirez will try and get him in. Ramirez, who has done his best work with runners in scoring position this year, hitting 474 in RBI situations. The newly installed number three hitter this year after hitting leadoff in the past, and the Mets will concede a run on a ground ball early. Infield back. And ball one to Ramirez. You know, when you think about it, we'll watch Bonifacio out of the box. Of course, he sees that by Sheffield. He thinks it's going to be caught, slows down, gets in the Cadillac, and can't turn it on enough to get the third. It's a team that will hit home runs, it'll score tons of runs, then it won't catch the ball. Ramirez has always already been talking to by his manager for not hustling on a play. I'm sure Bonifacio is going to get an earful also. Similar play to that, a ball that uh, Ramirez hit that he thought was going to be out, so he stood at home plate and admired it. And have to settle for a double on what should have easily been a triple. One and one to Ramirez, and he fouls it away. And so Maine, needing a strikeout, gets ahead one and two. You know, what my dad always says when guys don't hustle on the field, 
goes, do these guys know the games are on TV? <laughs> <laughs> Because they're going to catch you. It's a good point. I mean, <laughs> right? you know, you're taught in Little League. You, you run until uh, until you're told not to. Yeah. And you guys do know better, but they don't always follow through on it. As Ramirez loses the bat, which fortunately hits the screen. Everybody emerging unscathed as he lost control. Well, we've seen this happen to Cody Ross and Santana yesterday in the game that the Marlins got beat by the Phillies. He threw one of his bats five row, no, sorry, 15 rows above the Phillies dugout. Mm. Ramirez who homered against Maine in Florida back in early April takes it just low and it's two and two. 95 on that fastball from Maine, so the fastball is looking very good early on. That's a great sign to see him throwing that hard, because then he won't feel like he's short. When pitchers feel like they're a little short and their stuff is not as good, sometimes they try to overthrow. Ball straightens out. Work the bottom of the zone there. Let's see if he tries to come upstairs. 2-2 to Ramirez, just off the outside corner with the fastball. It's three and two. Ramirez with two home runs. Including the one against Maine, 12 runs batted in. Now on three and two, Ramirez fouls it away. But you have to like the game plan, Ronnie. He has changed that game plan the latter part of last year and the first part of this year. I think coming off the injury, he felt like he was going to try to mix in all of his pitches and mix them all in early. I think that's not a recipe for success for him. He just has to keep it simple early, and then his pitches will kind of evolve as the game goes. Use that fastball. This will be the eighth pitch of the at bat to Hanley Ramirez, and it hit him, and Ramirez will go to first base. That fastball riding inside at 95 miles an hour, and it hurts. And Hanley Ramirez will try and walk it off. Boy, that's the one you don't want to see, that one up on the wrist. That's that what is it that handmade bone that sometimes you get on the outside of that wrist and we've seen many hitters that ends up being a long time on the disabled list. Let's hope it's not for Hanley. Of course not only the bottom hand on the back but also his throwing hand. Watch it's his right hand as he comes through it'll hit the bottom of his wrist and hand. Mm. Right on the outside there. That was. He's done. Yeah, that was a, a similar spot to where Jeff Bagwell used yeah. to take it all the time, and uh, short a couple of seasons for him. And I am sure they're going to take Hanley Ramirez down and get that X-ray as quickly as possible. I'm sure we're going to see Mr. Amezaga probably. Amezaga was in the lineup in center field. Yeah, that's right. Made so, a mistake there. That's but right. they might probably move him to shortstop. Yeah. And looks like Russ Glode is coming on the field to run for Ramirez. Well, it's a bad break for the Marlins there. Their best player. Anything up and in like that, those injuries are not good for hitters. Russ Glode, last year with Kansas City, had some of his had his best year, really. Russ Glode, who grew up at East Hampton, big Keith Hernandez fan. Yeah. Very nice. Here's Jorge Cantu. So now Maine faced with an early crisis, first and third and one out. He was ahead of the count on Ramirez, but went to three and two and then hit him with the pitch. First batter that Maine has hit this year. So now Cantu, who's been struggling with a hand injury of his own, he got hit the first week of the season on his left hand. He's been playing through it. He also aggravated that uh, trying to catch a ball, hurt his wrist. And you know, we saw him. Actually aggravated during the series against the Mets as well, but Cantu has played through it and he's hitting 327. And you see he has the pad on the back of that left hand. Just look at that. It's a black pad on the yeah. white batting glove. Line toward the middle base hit, and the Marlins will take the early lead. Bonifacio in to score. Gload stops at second. It's an RBI single for Jorge Cantu. And so the Sheffield error costs immediately, and the Marlins have a one nothing lead. Well, center this fastball a little more. Can't too. The more you watch him play, the more you enjoy 
his ability to drive in runs, plays a nice first base. So here is Dan Ugla hitting just 231, but four homers and 16 runs batted in through the first 18 games of the year. Starts him off with a breaking ball. I guess you have to do that against Ugly. Well, he started with a breaking ball because the last time he faced him, he hit a fastball about 450 feet in Florida. Jeremy Hermida on deck. Yeah, he hit it in the upper deck at Dolphin Stadium. Ugly's a very funny hitter. If you make your pitches on him, he has really one swing. But if you make a mistake, he is going to hurt you. We're going back on the 10th, pitch and fresh differential, wants it on the outside corner. That is almost on the inside part of the plate. He's the kind of guy, if you make your pitches, you're going to get him out. But he doesn't seem to miss many mistakes. It was a little Warfield, by the way. <laughs> there you go. He made like Bob Greasy. Although that one came back, Warfield always caught it, didn't he? <laughs> They're going to have to make at least one quarterback reference before Mark Sanchez gets in. That's right. Mark Sanchez. First round pick of the New York Jets. 2-1 to Ugla. And it's taken high. And now main behind 3-1. and one. So an error, a hit by pitch, the base hit by Cantu producing a run, and main digging the hole a little deeper by falling behind Ugla with the left hand batting Hermida on deck. Big pitch to make here in the first inning for Main. And he caught the corner three and two. You know, it's not only that Maine is throwing his fastball, but it seems like he has a game plan to pitch these right handers in, something that the Mets pitchers have not been as successful as they'd like for Dan Warthin so far. Ugly, a big strikeout hitter. Runners won't go, and it's in there for a call strike three. So Maine picks up the second out as he gets Ugly looking. You make your pitches. You can get ugly. Nice one on the outside corner. Ugly saw that is outside. Dale Scott call third strike. I would wager, I'd have to go look at the numbers, that Ugly doesn't get a lot of call third strikes. No. Strikes out 160 times a year. Mostly swinging. Here's Hermita with two out and two on. And there's a call strike. Amita hitting 271 but a 411 on base percentage so he's off to a nice start. And he's done well against Maine 5 for 13 that's a 385 clip. And John attacks him with a fastball and it's fouled away 0 and 2. Well this is almost be a win for John if you can get out of this inning. The problem you have is see the pitch count has risen because of the error by Sheffield. But the problem that the Mets pitchers have had is kind of managing the inning. Haven't they the starters they get in this predicament and a two out hits really cost him. O2 struck him out. So Maine stays with the game plan, gets back to back strikeouts of Ugla and Hermida. Marlins get an unearned run and lead it one nothing.
Cleanup spot. Fernando Tatis gets the call at first base. Omer Santos third straight start. We'll say Reyes with a 12 game hitting streak. Carlos Beltran leading the league in hitting. As the Mets go up against right hander Anibal Sanchez. Well, Sanchez in 2006, his rookie season, won 10 games, 10 and 3, pitched a no hitter. Only the second Venezuelan to ever do that. They can see his start so far have been very, very strong. Not a lot of walks, low ERA. And he has completely recovered now from the shoulder surgery that knocked him out for more than a year. Came back late last year and off what we saw the first time he faced the Mets this season, he, he's got his, his mojo back. He does. Ray is sitting at 316 and Jose takes a strike and it's one and one. He won't throw as hard as John Mayne, but he is a painter. He will throw that ball on the outside down as a good cutter into the left handed hitters. Breaking ball fouled off. Ray is trying to bunch for a hit and it's one and two. Something that Reyes does not do a lot of bunting for hits. Luis Castillo on deck and then Carlos Beltran. I think as he's progressed and become a better hitter. He hasn't had to do that early in his career. He had to do it just to keep some hits out there. Curveball misses off the plate, and it's two and two. Twenty-five-year-old Anibal Sanchez, native of Venezuela, and Reyes pulls one down to first. Cantu handles it, and there's one away. Well, City Field is new, and it's new to all the visiting teams coming in. So we thought we'd listen in on the home plate discussion of the ground rules before the game tonight. First time here, so let's let you go over this. There's nothing new. I mean, no, no break. Ball play on top. Okay? Right. If, you, if you launch a field, all right. you can go underneath and grab it. All right, okay. Ball on top of the uh, step on play, on top of the uh, first, yeah. yeah. Face it. That on top of the top, you can get on the ball lodge, you know, you kill it. Right? right. Okay, here's the trick over here. <laughs> it's the wall over there. If the ball bounces fair and hit on the foul side and come back, it's still in play. Still in play. Yeah. And if it bounces over the fence, you know, it's double. Okay, even, right? even that concrete above the padding, playing that's, that's coming back. That's, that's good. That's good, yeah. That's the trick play it's over easy. here. It's easy. You know what I mean? All right, and you know, but there, there's a railing. Right. So you, you guys have to be aware. Everything of that. over the orange line. Orange yeah. line is everything, in play. Right. Everything over it is out. Right. Yeah. Okay. That subway sign over there is hanging over. Right. Stay, but if he hit the sign, it's, it's a home run. It's a home run. Okay. okay. And there's no other trick. The same thing over here. The ball goes on that railing over there by the wall. You know, the ball is in play unless the ball is touched. Okay. So if it goes up, we'll keep playing it. Really on the side of the wall there. Nobody touched it. Okay. And the same thing over here. You know, goes in. Down here you're saying even above the see how the orange line that's, goes. That's there? it, yeah, no, that's it. To the, 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 the left of it. To the left of it. Even though that part's back. Uh, no, that's why that's the that's the trick part. Not, not there. I see that and I also see like over. I know, that's that's the trick part over here. I think that's the first time we've ever done that's that. That's awesome. Fascinating. 
the, the intricacies with which you have to go through these things. Beltran pulls a curveball through into right field for a base hit. Castillo heading first to third. The throw from Glode trickles in. Castillo arrives safely, and the Mets have runners at the corners with one out. Well, it's nice of Carlos to wait till the end of that uh, meeting at home plate to get his base hit. Nice one right through the hole. Castillo with a look over his shoulder, then turns it on. Not a very strong throw by Globe, so if you're the third base um, coach, you know that anything there have a chance to be aggressive. Well, remember that with uh, with Ramirez, Hanley Ramirez getting hurt in the top of the first inning. The Marlins have to reconfigure the defense. Cody Ross normally plays right field. He's got a much stronger arm. He's now playing center field. Amazica, who was playing center, moved in to play shortstop for Ramirez, so that had an impact on that play. Because with Cody Ross, who pitched yesterday for the Marlins in right field, maybe that's a different kind of play. He's a little sore today. So. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so here's Sheffield hitting cleanup with Delgado out of the lineup, tying run at third with one out. Sheffield three for 22 to start the year. And he takes a strike from Sanchez on the outside corner. Well, Gary's really a pull hitter. The key here, though, Sanchez is going to work him a lot away with that cutter. You try to pull that, that becomes a ground ball. As you can see, the defense, second baseman over second base a little bit. Sheffield trying to make amends for his error in the top of the first, and he grounds one foul, and it's 0 and 2. What I find interesting is that in that meeting at home plate, it's not just the opposing manager, Freddie Gonzalez, who has to learn the ground. We'll, we'll, it's the umpiring yes. because it's their first time in here. And so Sandy Alomar Sr. had to explain all the little quirks and intricacies. I mean, I didn't have a long career, but I had a pretty good career. I've never heard the ground rules. First time ever. Never standing at the plate, never heard that. You never carried out the lineup card? They didn't let me. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh, it was very interesting because this ballpark of all ballparks has so many little intricacies and he saw how long it took him. I mean usually if you go to a ballpark that's been around a lot they'll they will you meet for 30 seconds and 45 of, seconds. And of course some of the things they talk about have not even come into play yeah. here over the first two weeks. 0 2 to Sheffield hit hard toward the middle base hit. That ties up the game as Castillo comes in to score. It's an RBI single for Gary Sheffield. His second run batted into the season. So that makes up for the error in the top of the inning, and the game is tied at one. Well, this pitch is supposed to be inside. It's supposed to be that cutter that starts at Sheffield's hip, ends up on the inside corner. It started at the inside corner. It came right over the middle. But beautiful hitting by Sheff. See, that's supposed to be on the inside corner. It ends up being on the outside part. A pitch that Sheffield can handle. Your IOTV pitch differential. So back to back base hits on 0 and 2 counts by Beltron and Sheffield. The Mets have a run and they have two on for David Wright. Trying to snap out of the doldrums. 23 strikeouts, the most in the National League. David was out for some early hitting today, trying to get his swing righted. Jerry Manuel was adamant that he feels that Wright is really close to breaking out of it. Said he's trying to get that loop out of his swing. David knows he has to do that. Hojo need, knows he needs to do that. Well, we don't know if he's gotten the loop out of his swing today. We know he's gotten the uh, the wave out of his hair. I decided to go uh, go completely shorn tonight. That's uh, anti Samson right there. But but you know the, the key is is that as you're trying to work through these problems you have to do it against pitchers who have great stuff trying to get you out. That's the rub. Good slider in for a strike. And it's one and one to right. Alvaro Sanchez has all the weapons. Yeah. Well, in fact uh, talking to his pitcher coach Mark Wiley sometimes he runs into a problem of throwing too many strikes. When he gets ahead he needs to get do a better job of putting the hitters away. One and one to right. And David can only wave at that slider. It's one and two. And his coverage on the outside of the plate right now is just not very good. Yeah, and this is usually a pitch that when he's going good, he will not swing at. That's a pitch he takes. So just not seeing the ball well. You know, a lot of times you have a lot of things in your noodle as you're trying to fight through these slumps. Daltron and Sheffield aboard with one out. One, two to right. And he won't bite at that slider, and it's two and two. Sanchez part of the very impressive young starting rotation for the Florida Marlins led by Josh Johnson who we'll see on Wednesday afternoon against Johan Santana but with Ricky Nolasco and 
Sanchez to two. Punched in a right field up base hit for right. Don't try to round third. He'll come on to score. Sheffield goes to third. It's an RBI single for David Wright and the Mets on a two to one lead. Extra work paying off. Well, we've always said when David struggles a little bit, if he can start thinking about going the other way, that stays him on the baseball much better. Look at that path. Much better. Right to the ball, almost like a straight line, not a, a little loop. And that ball is driven to right center. Nice first to third by Sheffield. Three straight, two strike hits for the Mets. As Sanchez made a mistake in the middle of the plate. I see this IOTV. He's ahead. This pitch to him He wants it on the outside corner, almost off the plate. Instead, he misses inside. As he's missing with that cutter pretty regularly against these Mets hitters. Mark Wiley, the pitching coach, paying a trip to the mound. Well, Sanchez shut the Mets out for five innings on the 10th of April. And he's 2 and 1 lifetime, a 282 ERA against the Mets, but. A walk and three straight hits have produced two runs here in the first inning. Still only one out. And Ryan Church, who is red hot with the bat and has great numbers against Sanchez, will step in. Church hitting at 357. He is seven for 13 lifetime against Donabel Sanchez with a home run. So a chance to do some damage here. First and third and one out with two runs already home. And Church takes a curveball for a strike. Sheffield is at third, right at first with one out. Close play as right dives back. He's got a good move, Sanchez. You've got to be very careful on the bases. One of the best right handed moves in the game. Watches the fastball high, one and one. Fernando Tatis getting the start at first base tonight. He was going to play even if Delgado had not been scratched. He was going to play second base in the original lineup. And that breaking ball stays high, two and one to Church. Jerry Manuel said he wanted to get some more pop in the lineup tonight. Mets are tied for last place in the National League in home runs. And you can blame part of it on the ballpark, but the opponents are hitting home yeah. runs here. The Mets are not. 2 1 to Church. Swing and a miss. Good breaking ball by Sanchez, and it's 2 and 2. Well, I think, you know, you want to hit home runs, of course. So you see this good breaking ball inside. I think the thing that alarms Jerry, though, is that this is a ballpark built for doubles and triples. So not to have a lot of extra base, base hits also is alarming. That's about three straight two strike hits and Church has been terrific with two strikes this year. Church hitting 391 with two strikes. He and Murphy are one two in the league in batting average with two strikes. Two two. Dribbled foul. That number's really been turned on its head. It used to be that if you got two strikes on a hitter that's when he had the became so defensive the numbers would, would not be even close to that maybe under. 250, you know, more be the number. Uh, normally, if you hit 270, 280 with two strikes, you've done a great job. Yes. Again, the 2 2, right down the middle, strike three call. So Church takes the fastball, and that's the second out. It's only the fourth time Church has struck out this season. Well, this pitch just surprised him. After breaking ball, breaking ball, and breaking ball from Sanchez, just surprises him with the fastball, gets beat by it. That's where maybe you're not guessing a breaking ball, but you've seen so many that your timing is about an 85 mile an hour breaking ball. That 92 mile an hour fastball surprises you. So now two out, runners still at first and third. And here's Fernando Tatis making just his third start of the season. He started at second base, he started in left field, and he's starting tonight at first base. Well, Jerry said that he was going to start to play more. They have a stretch where they play 10 in a row. They're in that stretch now, and then they'll have a day off and they'll play 20 in a row. And
and you know talking about playing Tatis and Sheffield tonight against Sanchez. In addition to wanting to get a little more pop in the lineup, Sanchez has been much more vulnerable against right hand hitters this year than he has against lefties. It seems like he would be better against righties with that slider he has, but that little cutter has been his great gift against the left handed hitter. In tight to Tatis 2 0. Oh. Well, we saw a young pitcher last night or yesterday afternoon in Jordan Zimmerman who just ate up the lefties inside. Omer Santos hitting eighth in the order on deck. Two and zero to Tatis, and that misses low and inside. Three and zero. I will tell you though, Gary. Once I got into my career, I had a much easier time getting left-handers out after a while because that's all I would face. Every lineup would be swamped with six, seven left-handers. So that's where you became comfortable in that side of the plate and started making mistakes to the right-handed hitters. You see the stark difference. It's only three starts yeah. this year, and that'll probably even out a little bit. It's been a hard-working inning for Sanchez. He's already thrown 31 pitches. We've seen the Mets swinging 3-0 and a lot this year. 31 pitches. Let's see if Mr. Tatis is. He's swinging, and he fouls it off. Well, I talked to Jerry Manuel about that. A couple of weeks ago after we saw Delgado hit a home run on a 3 0 pitch he said with my big guys with men in scoring position I'm going to give them the, the hit sign more often than not if we need a base runner that's something you yeah. different but in an RBI spot most of the time they're going to get the green light. Three one two high ball four and the bases are loaded. So the second walk of the inning issued by Anibal Sanchez and now Omir Santos will get a shot with the bases full and two down. Well, you see that little graphic making his third straight start very telling that Manuel very comfortable already with the young catcher. Santos five for 17 hitting a 294 looking for his first run batted in and a chance here with the bases full. And he watches high and Sanchez struggling one and oh Sheffield is at third right at second and Tatis is at first. What I liked about Santos so far and watching him is that if he sees the pitchers working him outside he is a thinking man like a catcher he'll hit that ball the other way. Lays off that slider and it's in for a strike. One and one. By the way, in your career, Ronnie, righties hit 250 against you, yeah. lefties 254. Oh, it's so pretty even. Right there. Okay. One one. Hit in the air to deep left field. Back goes Hermita going back. Warning track near the wall. It's out of here. Omir Santos with his first major league home run. And it's a grand slam. Lineup. He finds it from his catcher. His first major league runs batted in, and he gets four of them in one swing, and it's six to one New York. Pitch up in the strike zone. He just wailed on this ball from Santos. We've seen the home runs here. If they're hit high, they seem to carry out, and that was one of them. Congratulations, boy. That's awesome. Well, the city field crowd wants a curtain call from Omir Santos and his teammates tell him to go up the steps. 0 oh, 2 to John May. Well, Santos starting his third straight game tonight. And the more he plays, the more he makes a bid to stick around when Brian Schneider comes off the DL next weekend. Right now, Jerry Manuel is being very diplomatic. He said, oh, we're playing him to see what we've got. Yeah. Well, the more they see him, the more they like what they've got. Maine hits one toward the middle, but there's a Mezzica to play it, and that retires the side. But the Mets get their biggest inning of the year so far. A six-run bottom of the first inning. RBI hits for Sheffield and right and then Omir Santos unloads with the bases loaded and two out his first career runs batted in a grand slam for Santos.
Sanchez in the bottom of the first inning, but New York's new favorite Sanchez is in the booth with us. That's Mark Sanchez, the new quarterback for the New York Jets. Uh, Mark, congratulations. Thank you very much. This, this, uh, this has actually been a whirlwind for you the last oh, 48 hours. It's been, uh, it's been pretty wild, but, you know, the, the New York fans have, have really welcomed me, and uh, especially the Jets family. It's pretty special. You probably had no inkling, did you, that the Jets were going to draft you? I had no idea. I, I honestly didn't. I, I flew home for the draft. I mean, I wish I would have known. Maybe I could have stayed <laughs> out here. But, uh, you know, my family was at home, and, and they were excited uh, when I got the call. I got the 973 area code. So, <laughs> How important was it to spend the draft with your family? I know you're real close. You have a big family, and everyone's uh, um, so honored that you were drafted. Oh, it was uh, – it was great to have him around, and I was in the right spot. Um, you know, I had to be in SoCal with the fam, and my grandma was there. She's 92, wow. so she was sitting right there. I threw a Jets hat on her, and she was so excited. The whole family's been really excited. How much have you heard in the last two days about how different it's going to be being in New York as opposed to being in Southern California? They said get ready for the weather, uh, <laughs> get ready for the fans, and, um, you know, have fun at the baseball games, make sure I make it down to Times Square and things like that. So. It's uh, it's been great so far. I'm really adjusting well. I love it. Well, you got those big mitts. They shouldn't hurt you in the in the winter when you're playing that tough weather. What kind of baseball player were you? Uh, not great. <laughs> Decent. Decent. Well, uh, we're gonna take a look at your performance. Uh, oh boy, throwing out the first pitch today. This is ugly. No, that's not bad. <laughs> He didn't bounce it. That was the key. I know. That's what they said. <laughs> I said, you better not bounce it or you're in trouble. So I said, all right, thanks. Now, you, you know Ronnie went to Yale. Like, you I know. Your brother played Yale. My brother, yes, sir. My brother sure did. He, he graduated in 95 uh, or 96, the last year Carmen Causa was there. So you, you think it's hard playing in, at USC, trying to play behind an Ivy League line. That's how your brother <laughs> told you, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, there's been so much speculation about uh, you know, here you are, number five pick in the draft, coming to New York into the big market. Is he going to start from day one? Um, you know, you look at guys like like Matt Ryan and Joe Flacco last year, and, and you, the, the conventional wisdom used to be it's hard to bring a rookie in and start from day right. one, but may, maybe that's changed now. Well, I think, you know, they were really anomalies among rookie quarterbacks. They were pretty special. And to have a success they did, they had a great team around them, and I know I do at uh, in New York. It's very rare that you get – a team to go from 17 to 5. I'm flattered that Mr. Johnson and Mr. Tannenbaum and Coach Ryan did that for me. Uh, but that kind of, that tells you what kind of team we had. And, and, you know, they barely missed on the playoffs last year. So we're trying to get there. Amazing. It grounds out for the second out. Do you think playing in the system, though, at USC uh, gets you in a better place to be ready for that pro-type offense? Absolutely. It's uh, it's very similar. And I, I saw that in my meeting with uh, Coach Schottenheimer when they came out for my workout. And, you know, we were speaking the same language. Uh, a couple different terms here and there, but it was uh, very similar, so that was important. I know it was very important to you, your relationship with the Mexican-American community in Southern California. Now you're coming to New York with an enormous Hispanic population. What are your thoughts about that? Oh, that's, I mean, I'm embracing it, and it's been a blessing. At SC, I really, you know, started to understand what it's all about, and here it's only getting bigger and better. And, uh, you know, I'm proud to be, uh, you know, a Mexican-American, but more importantly, to be American where we can celebrate our own, our own heritage like that. It's, uh, it's very special, and, and I'm uh, trying to make the most of that opportunity. Tatis draping herself over oh, the rail and knocked huh. back in, too. Yikes. <laughs> That's the only contact you really have Good in effort. baseball. Good though. effort. <laughs> well, you know, Ronnie knows this. I, I've been a season ticket holder for the Jets for over 30 years, and, you know, no pressure, but the <laughs> folks up in Section 324, my, my buddy Bobby Chalicombe and all the guys, they, they'd like to see another Super Bowl in their lifetime. No pressure, just don't <laughs> blow it. <laughs> That's great. One and two to Anadol Sanchez, and it's outside two and two. Have any of the Jets reached out to you? Do you have any uh, USC guys or friends over there with there's, the Jets already? There's actually, I don't think there's many USC guys. I saw Sean Green, the oh. other draft pick, uh, one of the other draft picks. And um, so, you know. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens, but I'm, I'm probably going to meet some of the guys tomorrow. Okay, great. Perfect. Well, Mark, we'd oh, like to wow. present you with the uh, New York Mets That's batting really helmet. Cool. Nice. That's great. Yeah, thank you guys very that much. That goes with the, uh, the jersey and everything thank you, else. Thank you. There's, There's no like face mask with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Mark Sanchez joining us in the booth, the new Jets quarterback. John Maynard, the Mets, with a 6-1 to lead.
Beningo take on all the New York sports drama as they go head to head with the Daily News beat writers behind the hottest stories on Daily News Live presented by City weekdays at 5 p.m. right here on SNY. Joe's psyched up about uh, the Jets drafting Mark Sanchez. I was just thinking, I've been here four years. That's the first time I've seen you gush in this booth. <laughs> but I'll tell you, he's I've a pretty amazing you. kid, isn't he? I just got to say hi to his father, his brother who went to Yale, which is pretty cool. Well, if he makes it, if he's good, if he leads the Jets to playoff appearances, he's going to be a legend in this town. Oh, yes. He's a really personable kid. He speaks well. He's he's good looking. Yeah. He's got he's got all the the off the field skills. If he's that good on the field, it's going to be big time. It looks like an actor. As soon as he wins the jet job, he'll be on Entourage because they're Queens boys, right? He looks a little like. He uh, does. I don't know the name of that actor is. Adrian, I should know. Adrian, um, somebody will tell us. Anyway, Jose Reyes grounded out his first time up. Reyes started the day with a 12 game hitting streak. Mets batted around in the first thanks to Omir Santos and his grand slam. One and two to Reyes with Castillo and Beltran to follow. It's an amazing when you make out a lineup before the game and you're looking at it and you're saying to yourself, boy, Sheffield and Tatis going to give me a little power, a little bit of pop. Reyes grounds it to Ugla and that's the first out. Oh, by the way. The pop comes from Santos. Well, you know, we saw some of this during spring training. I mean, yeah. Santos hit four home runs during spring training and just, I think, 23 at bats. So he, he showed it off a little bit. He's got a nice approach. He's got a nice short stroke, puts the ball in play, and that one was fence high, and he just hit it. Way to go, Omar. Adrian Grenier. There we go. Yeah, that. anything under a certain age, I don't know anymore, <laughs> well, my buddy. Kids, my kids watch out all the time. There you so. go. You know, sometimes your viewing patterns are shaped by those around you. <laughs> Luis Castillo walked and scored in the opening inning. Luis started the day fifth in the National League in batting at 365, but he got overmatched a little by Jordan Zimmerman yesterday. Taking high and it's 2-0. and oh. You know, Ryan Church, I was talking to him about Zimmerman. He said, you know, the thing I was most impressed at, yes, he throws hard. Yes, he has good breaking ball. But he's one of the few young pitchers, he said, I've faced all year that came right after me. And he goes, maybe it's easy to come after someone when you have 96 miles an hour. But still, you know, you could just sense from his body language that he was not shaking at all. He was going right after the Mets hitters. Castillo hits it hard, but right at Ugla. And quickly, there are two out. So Sanchez bounces back to retire the first two in the second. And now Carlos Beltran comes up. By the way, speaking of the Nationals, they have moved on to Philadelphia and they lead the Phillies five to two in the third inning tonight, going up against Joe Blanton. Ryan Zimmerman has a home run, and Elijah Dukes, who I guess uh, only had a one-day respite from the lineup, has a home run as well. Here's Beltron, and he hits one in the air to center field. Tony Ross has it lined up. And so Annabelle Sanchez bounces back with a 1 2 3 inning after he gave him six in the first. John Main back to the mound for the third, working with a 6 to 1 lead.
Remember all Mets games on SNY are available in HD presented by IOTV. Two games to go with this series. Levon Hernandez against Ricky Nolasco tomorrow night. And then circle your calendar Wednesday afternoon. The rematch, Johan Santana against Josh Johnson. That should be something else. And then the Mets are in Philadelphia and Atlanta on the upcoming road trip. Emilio Bonifacio leads off in the third inning and takes ball one from John Main. Bonifacio had a routine fly ball to left that Gary Sheffield dropped for an error. Bonifacio scored the unearned run. And he bunts this one foul and it's one and one. Bonifacio who made uh, a couple of moves last year from Arizona to Washington and then from Washington to Florida. He was the, the key player that the Marlins got when they traded away Scott Olson and Josh Willingham over the winter. Seems like a lot to have given up. Well, he has the tools. I mean, arguably the fastest guy in the sport. 365 down the first baseline. Big cut, and it's two and two. And I was thinking about what you said before about him getting a little overconfident. Remember how his year began? He hit. A ball over Lastings Millage's head for an inside the park home run. And, you know, as a little guy, you don't want to be hitting the ball in the air. Down low, and it's three and two, particularly when you have all that speed. Yeah, so, you know, he kind of mirrors what has happened to uh, the Marlins, really. I mean, they have six wins against the Nationals, so how do you rate their early start? Well, the thing we know about the Marlins is they're going to get quality starting pitching yeah. those days. Obviously, Anibal Sanchez got off to a terrible start today, giving up six runs in the first. But Freddie Gonzalez can usually count on getting through the first five or six innings being in the game. It's what happens after that that's been a, a concern. 3 2. Bonifacio slaps one to short. Reyes playing shallow against his speed and throws him out for the first out. By the way, this kid can run very fast. You don't see that very often. Reyes had to hurry his throw to get Bonifacio at first base on a routine play. What do they say? He can pick him up and put him down. Without much delay in between. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's three straight ground ball outs now for John May. Not necessarily his stock in trade. And John Baker takes outside for ball one. Baker grounds it out his first time up. Only two balls hit out of the infield so far against Maine. The fly ball that Sheffield dropped, and then Cantu's base hit in the first. Two and zero to Baker. We we'll see a catcher hitting second very often. I think uh, the contemporary players, Jason Kendall, maybe hit second occasionally. Maybe Brad Osmus early in his career, but. See Kendall hit lead off yeah. times. Ba Baker can't. He's not a fast runner. But he's a good on base guy. Takes a lot of walks. Knows how to play the game. Smart kid from Cal Berkeley. 382 on base percentage. And betters it with that because he draws a one on walk. First walk given up by Maine, who walked five in his last start. And so the Marlins have a one out base runner. And now Ross Glode will bat for the first time. Glode came on as a pinch runner for Hanley Ramirez, who left after being hit. On the right hand by a John Main pitch, we've yet to hear a medical report on Ramirez. And certainly the Marlins will be crossing their fingers that there's nothing broken in that hand. Mm. Because that would be a terrible blow to this Florida team. Glode takes up an end for ball one. Ross Glode playing in flushing against the team he grew up rooting for. Very interesting to see Omir Santos. Here he is, a rookie, running out there right away to talk to John Main, try to quiet down his pitcher after the walk to Baker, taking more of a leadership role. That's a great thing, though, about catchers, aren't they? I mean, they're taught from such an early age to, to manage the game. We just talked to Mark Sanchez to be the quarterback of the team. Santos, for a guy who spent very little time in the big leagues, is very comfortable. Load lifts one to right, and Church is right there waiting for it. And that's the second out. 
I mean, when we've talked with Jerry Manuel about Santos, the one thing he says immediately is just how quiet is he is behind the plate. There's not a lot of wasted motion, not a lot of moving around. The pitchers love to throw to him, and that's the thing that that struck the Mets about Santos first this spring. And for you people at home, why is that important? It's important because you can get strikes from the umpires. Umpires don't like to call a game behind a catcher who's reaching a lot or grabbing or stabbing. They like the guy to be nice and quiet back there, let the ball come to him. Jorge Cantu singled in the Florida run with a base hit up the middle in the first inning. Batting here with a runner at first and two out. Slider by Maine to get ahead 0 2. Secondary pitches have certainly been a concern for John. That was a beautiful slider. Now, the key for John, when I watch this, when he gets 0 2, can he put him away? Or will he have a purpose pitch? Maybe brush him back inside, then go back away with the slider. In there for a call strike three. Got him looking at that slider. Can't do down to end the inning. Third strikeout for John Maine. We go to the bottom of the third, six to one, New York. Place great seats and a great time. Visit Mets.com or call 718-507-TIXX for your print at home tickets now. Gary Sheffield will lead off for the Mets in the home third. Well, good news for the Marlins on Hanley Ramirez. They X-rayed his right hand and the X-rays were negative. Mm, that's good. Sheffield takes a slider for a strike. Did you see what happened in the game yesterday between the Cardinals and the Cubs? Todd Wellemeyer threw a ball up and in, hit Soriano. Sheffield hits one to dead center. Back goes Ross, gets turned around, and it's over his head, and he runs it down. What a great play by Cody Ross on a ball hit directly over his head. This kid can do more than just pitch. He can. What a beautiful catch. Should I dare say Willie Mays like? Wow. Just turned and went almost like a wide receiver. And this ball is laced, and he was not playing that deep. Had to go a long way. Fine catch by Ross. Well, Ross played a lot of center field for the Marlins last year. They moved him to right this year. Cameron Maven's been getting most of the time at center, but because of the Ramirez injury, he was moved over to center field in the first inning tonight, and he makes a tremendous play. To Rob Sheffield of an extra base hit. Now David Wright takes a slider for a strike. These outfielders at times must feel like, boy, I'm still running and there's no warning track yet. Where is it? By the way, uh, 
if Mark Sanchez is looking to recruit a receiver, we, <laughs> we know he can run a post route. That's right. <laughs> One and two to right. There's Mark making friends. Got the family around him. Oh, that's great. Well, this is David right before the game, taking some extra hitting with Howard Johnson. And they're just really trying to work on getting a straight line from the bat to the ball. No looping, just a direct straight shot, a little tighter swing. That breaking ball popped foul. Cantu hoping for a play near the dugout. And he made the catch. Nice play by Cantu. Right in the same area where Tatis came close to catching one earlier. That one just available for Cantu. Got to the railing and made the catch. See what you're supposed to do for your, your teammate is if you're sitting over there, move over a couple of seats. And get in the way of Cantu so he can't make that play. The problem now is the dugouts are too big. That's right. <laughs> you got guys spread out all over the place. Front row, back row. Here's Ryan Church with two out and nobody on. So Sanchez now retired six in a row after the rough start. And Church takes ball one. Finish my story what I was saying. Todd Walmart hit Soriano. And in the next inning, Rich Harden drilled Albert Pujols. It's something you don't see very often anymore. Pujols was not very happy either. But I wouldn't mess with Harden. He's a former hockey player. I wouldn't mess with Pujols. <laughs> There's a strike and it's one and one. Harden would pull his jersey over his head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know those guys can always fight on skates. That's right. <laughs> Out of the way by Church one and two. Well, there's every chance the hockey season in New York could end tomorrow. Boy, they had it right in their hands too. Not that they can't get it back, but had a three-one, and that offense of Washington is starting to heat up a little bit. Old foul, and not just the Rangers, but the Devils also facing yeah. a game seven. I know when I played here, I used to go to all the Ranger games. I really enjoyed the playoff hockey. It can be scintillating. Yeah, it's amazing. Over the mound, Uglo can't get to it, and it goes right under his glove. I don't know if he thought Amezica was going to come over to play it, but Uglo just pulled the glove out of the way. And Church has a base hit. Well, that's exactly what happened. Uglo thought that it would be an easier play for Amezica to get it, but Amezica, of course, was not going to get there in time. Watch. He goes, you know what? I'll give it to the guy who's working his way towards first. I'm not sure he would have had much of a play even no. had he somehow been able to glove that ball. In any event, uh, Tease comes to the play with a man on. Fernando drew a walk his first time up. That's with a six to one lead. They got all six in the first. Off Anibal Sanchez. And Tatis breaks his bat and shoots it up the middle. Base hit. Pulling into second is Church. The barrel of the bat wound up in the stands. And the Mets have two men on, or did it go in the dugout? No, it went in the dugout. And that's the camera well, that's where it went. I hope our guys are okay down there. All cameramen safe, I hope. Fans, when you're at the game and cameramen, please pay attention to those bats because they are so dangerous. So Tatis sacrifices a bat for a hit, and that gives Omir Santos another RBI chance. Santos came up with the bases loaded and two out in the first. Without a major league run batted in, he had 10 at bats last year with the Orioles. He had, had 14 more this year with the Mets, 17 more this year with the Mets, no RBIs, and then he got four on one swing. Well, he caught this fastball just up in the strike zone. Looked like it was going to be a little cutter that never cut. Dropped it in the front row and despair for Sanchez. Made Omir Santos only the third Met to hit a grand slam for his first major league home run. One we remember very well. That was Jose Reyes did it in Anaheim in 03. If go back a little further for the other one, Jack Hamilton, who was a pitcher, hit a grand slam in 1967 for his first big league home run. Jack Hamilton, who would later become well, for me, it's famous for something awful. Yeah, when I was a kid, of course, I knew the name Jack Hamilton because the ball slipped and got away from him on a night in Boston and hit Tony Canigliaro. Young so, slugging star of the Red Sox who um, had his career damaged and uh, he made a comeback, but was never quite the same after Hamilton hit him. 0 2 to Santos, taken high, 1 and 2. I think that. 
Hamilton actually wasn't the first Met pitcher to hit a grand slam. If memory serves, Carlton Willie hit a grand slam. 64, 65, wow. somewhere in there. 1 2, curve ball stays high. Sanchez hasn't had much command of that curve tonight. It's 2 and 2. Church is at second, Tatis at first, couple of two out singles. Mets now have six hits in the game. And Santos, after falling behind 0 2, has worked it back even with the pitcher on deck. Right back to Sanchez, who knocks it down, has plenty of time. And guns down <laughs> Santos with a throw into the runner. That put Cantu at risk. So Sanchez works around the two out hits, and it's still 6 1 Mets. Lead into the fourth inning. Dan Ugla leads off against John Main. Ugla went down looking his first time up. Well, we had our statistician Dave Freed look up the numbers on Ugla last year. 171 strikeouts, 45 looking. Mm. It's more than I would have thought. And he takes in tight from Main, ball one. It'll be Ugla, then Jeremy Hermida and Cody Ross in the fourth inning. Foul ball off Santos, or was it off the home plate umpire Dale Scott? I think that was a double shot, Gary. Got both of them. Ooh, two for the price <laughs> of one. Boy, it caught the top of the helmet, too, of one of Santos. Don't forget, guys. Years ago, catchers did not wear a protective helmet, just wore their hat backwards. Equipment has been really updated. Thank God for the catchers. Off the mid of Santos, and it's two and two. Carlton Willie was the first Met pitcher to hit a grand slam, 1963. Wow. You see the strikeout numbers on Ugla. Big risk, big reward. <laughs> 2 2. Struck him out. Went back to the slider to get him. That's four strikeouts for John Maine. And this is a much better looking John Maine tonight. Well, we talked about it early. He established his fastball. Once he established that pitch, then he could start going to his slider and breaking pitches. And he's had a good one to the right hander so far today. So one out and nobody on that, Jeremy Hermida. How much do you make of 
the fact that Maine is pitching this well tonight against Florida a team that he has historically done well against and had a good start against them his first outing of the year and here he is again tonight after two very difficult starts coming back and pitching well again and a good pitch count so far it's it's interesting you do feel sometimes more comfortable against certain teams and I think this is a team that John would just naturally be better against they're a free swinging team they strike out a lot um, they don't have a lot of guys that you know are going to fall off tough pitches they stay in their bat which always rises uh, John's pitch count so he can get some early strikeouts and get on a roll and then I think it's all confidence with John after a while isn't it he starts to feel confident feels good about his pitches he seems to sail through the game when he's fighting himself just the opposite. Had that extraordinary game against the Marlins, the second to last day in 2007. Carried a no hitter into the eighth, struck out 14. Here is Paul Hoover. Anyway. I was going to say, there's no reason for me to ever remember the name Paul Hoover. I always will now. Wright stays with it and makes the catch as he stumbled backwards and then disgustedly spikes it over to Reyes. That's the second out. Let's check in with Kevin Burkhardt. Kevin. Now, guys, you mentioned Cody Ross pitched an inning uh, yesterday, and I had a conversation with him about it. It was it was quite humorous, as a matter of fact. He told Freddie Gonzalez in the spring that if ever a game uh, was like that, he would you know polish off an inning or two if need be. He has a pitching background. So yesterday, Gonzalez approached him, said, "Hey, as long as you're not going to go kill yourself, you can go in there." So he went in there. He was kind of excited and nervous. Had no idea where in the lineup things were. Goes in, throwing the ball around the infield, getting ready. All of a sudden, the PA says, now batting Ryan Howard. <laughs> Couldn't believe who he was facing, but he got him out just as Santos gets out. Ross right there. It's an easy one, two, three inning for John Maine. He is cruising, and so are the Mets, leading the fish six to one here at City Field. Like trivia question for tonight. Who's the youngest player ever to win a batting title? Well, this one I know. You do know. I do. American League. Tiger. Yep. Okay, got it. <laughs> John Main leads off and takes a fastball for a strike. Well, we're not going to give it away or anything. <laughs> Main grounded out to short his first time up. And he bounces this one slowly. Amezaga stays back to make the grab and throws him out. That was awkwardly done by Amezaga. One away. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Budweiser, the great American lager. I wonder which Budweiser sign. Is harder to hit. The one that was above the scoreboard at Shea. Yeah. When Mulvaughn plunked in the middle and they said it was 505 feet. Reyes lifts one to shallow right. And Gloat comes on. Ugly goes out. Ugly makes the grab for the second out. Or this one, which is 
above the batter's eye, dead center. And what, 40 feet back from the fence? No one's hitting that. I'll tell you that right now. Okay. And you saw Bovon hit that. I also saw someone hit the Budweiser sign off Roger Town. Claude L. Washington is the Atlanta Braves. And he hit up right where the suds were. <laughs> so it was the farthest one I saw. Well, the most impressive home run I ever saw hit at Chase Stadium. Well, there, there were some long ones in the early days. Richie Allen hit some incredible yeah. shots. Dave King had a couple in the parking lot. But the most incredible one I ever saw was the one Mark McGuire hit to the opposite field. Yeah. That hit, if you'll remember, the um, the visitors lineup was on the left side of the scoreboard, way out in right center field, and he hit the number four hitter in the lineup. Wow. He took a number uh, a light out of Ray Lankford's uh, name and number. But remember when I got traded to the Oakland Athletics I went over there and their batting practice people would get to the park early to watch Conseco and McGuire take batting practice and literally this is no lie they would hit at each 10 to 15 out during batting practice and I'm standing there in center field going boy am I in the wrong league I got to get back over there in the National League. Well, he had some tape measure shots last year, didn't he? Delgado. He did. Bouncing ball over the mound. Tough play. Amezica, he can't make it. And Castillo has an infield hit. Would have been hard for Amezica to throw him out, even had he handled it cleanly with Castillo running well. Well, just one of those that gets in on Amezica. Amezica, you know, when you look at his glove, it's a little bigger than you usually see for a shortstop, probably because he plays so much outfield. Hits in that big glove, not able to handle it. You're right. No play. Do you think he um, he changed gloves when he moved to the infield? I think he might have, but if you're used to a regular glove, as we see Castillo, looks like he might have hurt himself. Looks like he hurt his back yeah. as he's bending back. Yeah. You know, smelling that hit. He really detected there, but maybe that back tightening up on him. Have to be a spasm or something that happened after he touched the bag. So Ray Ramirez out to see if he can continue. Jerry Manuel looking on as well. The last thing Castillo needs right now is to get hurt. After all the work that he's done to get himself healthy and off to a fast start. Remember, he was one for ten to start the season. Then he had that mm -hmm. four-hit game in Florida that first Saturday of the season. And he has been rolling ever since. And he will stay in. It's a nice hand from the crowd. Like to see that. Uh, given Louis' mindset right now, his leg would have to be broken in <laughs> yeah. three places to come out of the game. I agree. He's as hot as hot can be with the bat. Well, not just that. I, I think I, he, he thinks he has a lot to prove. Yeah, in terms I agree. Of being able to stay healthy and, and be himself. Which he really never was last year. He's in some pain, though, I'll tell you that. So now Beltron bats with Castillo at first and two down, and uh, Sanchez makes him move, and that looked very awkward. That was just mean. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's, what, how it goes. that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. You're supposed to try and take advantage of your opponent's weakness, <laughs> like being a boxer. It's like throwing a ball down and in, they foul it off their shoe top, go right back in there. Sure. Doesn't make Louis feel any better. <laughs> Beltron one for two tonight, now hitting at 408, leading the league in hitting. Maybe this time shortens up the lead even more so he can walk back into the bat. But Sanchez clearly is going after him. Well, he better concentrate on who's leading the National League in hitting. Carlos Beltron at the plate. Throws a curveball for a strike. Well, if you'll remember the, the play that ended the last inning, Sanchez is mad about the way his night is going. He fired the ball to first yeah. base, almost put his first baseman Cantu in jeopardy throwing into the runner. So he's, uh, he's got a little edge to him right now. Up and away to Beltron, one and one. Maybe he's, uh, he's taking Scott Olson's spot in the rotation. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Gary well, Sheffield on deck. When you're going through that and you give up the grand slam, it's like an inning and a half later that you start to realize that you have an awful night working. You better shut him out for the rest of the time or take it out on Luis Castillo. Which he's doing now. He's already thrown up the first base five times. 1 1 to Beltron. Fouled away. 1 and 2. Ryan Zimmerman is at a second home run tonight. 
And the Nats now lead the Phillies six to two in the fifth. Blanton's got off to a slow start too, hasn't he? Hero in last year's playoffs for the Phillies. As we see Blanton in the final game of the series down there on Sunday against John Main. One two swing and a miss. He struck him out with a high fastball. Second strike out of the night for Sanchez and we'll see whether Castillo is able to continue. We head for the fifth. John Main back to the mound. The Mets with a six. Come out of the game, and we'll get a medical report on him as soon as we can. Alex Cora takes over at second base, but I really think that Castillo did not want to come out of the game in the middle of the inning. I, I totally agree with it. You know, he wants to prove to this crowd that he's, you know, like he's been his entire career, a tough warrior, and didn't want to leave injured. Good for him. That is Hanley Ramirez back in the Marlins dugout after getting X rays on the right hand after being hit by a John Main pitch back in the first inning. X rays proved negative, and that allows Hanley to smile. Now, Main behind on a Mezzica 2 0. A Mezzica grounded out to, set to second base his first time up. And that's outside ball three. And Mezzica began the year on the disabled list. He sprained his knee playing in the WBC for Mexico. Well, he'd hurt his other knee first and then went because he was compensating for it, hurt the other knee. There's ball four, and so Main issues a leadoff walk. Second walk given up by John Main. So that'll bring the pitcher to the plate. Anibal Sanchez coming up. What? Rob. Hey. Rob doing here? This is Rob's. Oh, it's Rob from Cascarinos. He brought us food. This is out. Chicken parm. Eggplant parm. Very nice. Ooh, that looks outstanding. That's awesome. Well, thank you very thank you. much, Rob. We were getting a little hungry. I thank you very that. much. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. Bunted right along the line. Santos with a tough play right over the pitcher's head. As he throws out Sanchez, nicely done by Santos. Sacrifice goes two to three. You know how jealous Keith is going to be? Yeah, he loves food day, doesn't he? <laughs> Nice play by Santos. He almost has to jump. It's almost like a Bobby Lane pass, the jump pass to the tight end to get it over the head of Sanchez. Nice play by Santos. This pizza smells so good. It does. I don't know if I'm going to be able to wait to between <laughs> it. Come on, you got play by play duties. Oh, you might have to move it a little bit to your side. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Bonifacio with a runner at second and one out. You know what's going to happen? What? Keith's going to start to come to the ballpark on his days off. No, he's just going to call Rob up and say, "Yeah, Rob, when are you going to make the delivery?" Okay, I'll, I'll be there for that game. Well, the nice thing about it is, you know, Cascarinos 
has four different locations that throughout City Field, so you can find them everywhere in the ballpark. Over at left center, Sheffield gives way to Beltron <laughs> after Gary dropped one earlier in the game. Give way to the Gold Glover for the second out. Bonifacio's retired. Now tell me a little bit about Cascarino. It's been around forever. Uh, On College Point. 1989. Cool. Yeah. Official pizza of the New York Mets. It says that right here on the box. Bottom. Official pizza of the New York. Very Mets. nice. I've never had Cascarino's pizza, so I can't wait. It's outstanding. They have. Uh, they have. I know they have a location out in center field, out uh, where uh, all the people are always walking. Okay. Out there. Cool. And I know they have one in the Caesars Club, which is uh, back behind us. And I think they're also in the promenade upstairs. So they're, uh, they're widely available in the ballpark. John Baker takes inside for ball one. So I'm sure Rob did not bring us this food just to get a free plug, but I'm very happy that he did. Well, I've, I've known Rob for a while. He's a good guy, solid. Baker tries to hold, and he went around, and it's one and one. Baker is grounded out and walked 0 for 1. All the scoring in this game in the first inning. The Marlins got an unearned run as the result of Sheffield's drop. Maine worked his way through that first and has had an easier time of it since because he's had a five run lead since then. That's got their six in the bottom of the first, the biggest inning of the year. Baker takes in tight two and one, but it is a much more confident John Maine yeah. out there tonight. Well, I think, you know. With what the starting pitchers have been going through, not him, <laughs> he's been going well. Um, you know, they've been struggling, of course, and in this town, when you struggle, everyone's going to know about it, going to read about it, and everyone's going to remind you about it. But you know, what can help sometimes is when you get into a game and your team picks you up with all these runs, and it gives you a little cushion so you can relax out there, and I think that's what you see in John Mayne tonight. He's given up only one hit tonight, a first inning single to Cantu. Baker fouls it off three and two. John Baker uh, came up last year and really established himself as a bona fide big leaguer. And to the to the extent where when the Marlins had a chance to sign Pudge Rodriguez, they turned down the opportunity because Pudge wanted to play every day. And they said, "Look, if you come here, that's great, but Baker's going to play." So Pudge is now in Houston and playing most of the time there. 3-2, low and inside ball four, so Maine issues his third walk of the night. Well, those are the numbers coming into the game, and you see that every pitcher has an advantage when yeah. he gets ahead, and maybe a little more so with Maine so far this year. I like this, Danny Worthy coming out. You know, he's got a good game going. It's in the fifth inning, which seems to be the bewitching hour now for the Mets starting pitchers other than Santana. Trying to get yourself through one more out, so you're the pitcher of record. And Danny just trying to calm him down, saying, listen, you're a little off kilter here. Let's get back to strike one. Throw something down in the zone and get through this inning. Weekdays at 5.30 p.m. It's nine innings of passionate debate about the Mets, Yankees, and all things New York sports. Catch Brian Custer and Brandon Tierney as they take on the biggest sports topics of the day in the wheelhouse. Weekdays at 5.30 only on SNY. So now Ross Glowed, who was in Hanley Ramirez's spot in the batting order, two out and two on, and he fouls the first pitch fastball back, nothing and one. Glowed flied to right his first time up. Ross has spent virtually his entire career in the American League before coming over to the Marlins this spring. Mezzica at second and Baker at first with two down. A pair of walks by Maine here in the fifth. And Glode attacking the fastball, fouls it back, and it's 0-2. You said Glode from East Hampton, right? The yep. most famous, maybe, Hampton baseball player could call you Stremski. I think uh, Southampton. Southampton, right? Out of the uh, potato field. Wasn't his dad a potato farmer, I believe? Now Maine ahead 0-2. Late swing foul. 94 on that fastball from Maine. On maintaining his velocity, about to throw his 85th pitch of the game here in the fifth inning. Threw 110 in five and two thirds against the Cardinals on Wednesday. This is a much different outing. 0 2. In the air to center field, and Beltron right there waiting for it. Side retired. Main works around a couple of walks. He's allowed just one hit through five. We're halfway through, and the Mets leading 6 to 1.
John Main, five terrific innings. He's walked three, but he's only given up one hit and an unearned run. And Gary Sheffield will lead off for the Mets in the bottom of the fifth. Sheffield has swung the bat well today. He singled the center to drive in a run in the first, and then he hit one deep to center and was robbed, flat out robbed of an extra base hit on a terrific play by Cody Ross on a ball that had beaten Ross, but uh, Ross with the fingertip grab. Mm -hmm. By the way, I have been chastised for calling what Ross did a post pattern. I'm told I should have more accurately called it a fly pattern. Yeah, it was. Sorry, I didn't want to correct you. That's why I don't do football play by play. <laughs> Two and out of Sheffield. Well, what I do, here's what I do. Okay. I sit in the upper deck and I scream. Oh, well, you do the whole time? That's what I do. I don't scream as much as I used to, <laughs> but I still get I get loud. There's a slider in for a strike. Well, maybe that's the problem. The Jets have been running uh, post patterns when they should be flying, running fly patterns. From where I sit in section 324, nobody can hear me on the field. Yanked on the ground down to third, and Bonifacio off the back, can't do to put the tag on Sheffield. It was a very wide throw by Bonifacio, but Cantu still had time to make that tag. So he said that Bonifacio, who played the outfield in Arizona, played second base mostly with Washington, has moved over to third, has great range, but he, if he has a problem, it's that he has a second base arm playing third base. Mm -hmm. So you gain range, but you may lose a little bit of arm. Here's David Wright. David single to right center to drive in a run in the first, and then he fouled out. A nice play by Cantu draped on the dugout railing in the third. Check swing foul ball 0 and 2. When the Jets won their only world championship, we were a huge fan. I was 10 years old. A great age to be. I was sitting in my Uncle Irving's living room. <laughs> and just to tell you what a geek I was, I charted every play. Wow. 1 and 2 to right. Mostly fly and not post. Well, but yeah, no, I'm mostly kidding. Run and pass. Yes. I was 10. But I still have that. Wow. Yeah. You are a collector of that kind of stuff. Well, I'm just a pack rat. I don't throw anything. Really? My wife's like that. One, two to right, fouled off. We have many discussions about that, by the way. I mean, I've got an attic with loose leaf folders filled with play by play accounts of every game I ever watched or listened to as a kid. <laughs> so you can understand my social life may have not have been all that it should have been. <laughs> Listen, in my house, I throw stuff out, I go back into my closet, it's folded back there in there again. Go. Okay. One two rolls over that slider down to third. Another chance for Bonifacio. This throw right on target to get right for the second out. Well, I'm the kind of person who, if I go away for a road trip for a week, yeah, and something has been moved one inch on my desk, really, I know it. Yeah. Tell me about okay. So if, if that year was the finest year, of course, for all Jets fans, what was the worst year for you? Well, you know, there were so many horrible years. Yeah. I mean, there was the year I remember being at, at Shea when the Jets played there. And it was late in the season, and they played the Saints, who were 0-14 at the time. And the Saints beat the Jets. Oh. And I remember being there at the end of the game, because I didn't leave before the end. And there were probably about 1,000 people left in the stands at the end. And it had just started to snow. That, that's a perfect tableau for a Jets fan. Was that the year that they were the Aints? Um, they had a few years like that. Maybe. I mean, the Jets have often been the Ets. <laughs> swing and a miss, and Church down swinging on three pitches. Good inning for Annabelle Sanchez. He has his third strikeout. Five in the books now at City Field. And the Mets maintaining that six to one lead.
Maryland six to one. And Jose Reyes off to a really nice start this year in the field and at the plate. And in spring training, I had a conversation with Jose Valentin when he was there with the Mets. Of course, he was the guy that really helped Jose Reyes along when he was here. And I asked him what it would take from Jose to go from a great player to an absolute elite player. And he said, well, he's not too far away. Basically, when you look at Jose, certainly he has all the tools on the field. But there are certain little things that could take him to that elite level where only a few players lie. He said there are certain little things, for example, when he does badly at the plate, he tends to take that into the field. And that's something he has got to stop. He said he's got to realize that he does not have to do absolutely everything when he gets on. He doesn't have to seal every base. He doesn't have to seal every time. And there's a heck of a play by Reyes. If he can finish it, he does. Jose Reyes on cue with the stab and the throw. And there's one away. And, and Jose Valentin talked about Reyes saying, you know, not only not stealing every time, but knowing the situation, knowing certain little things, what to do uh, at the plate. Just little things in the game, guys, that he feels can take Jose to the next level. And we'll see if this year is that time for him. And one of those little things he just did was on that hard hit smash, knowing exactly how much time he had to get yeah. himself up and throw out Cantu at first base. Because what you'll see a lot of times, especially in younger players, they'll rush that throw and they won't complete the play. But... You know, that just takes special talent. There's only a couple of people in baseball to make that play. This is a reaction play. Well, the ball knocks you to the seat of your pants. You know it's been hit pretty hard. One and one to Ugla, who struck out twice already tonight, looking in the first and swinging in the fourth. The Rangers and the Devils need that from Lundquist and <laughs> Brodeur in their seventh games. They've both been known to do that. In Philadelphia, Ryan Howard is at a grand slam off Sharon Martis, and they've tied up the Nats 6 6 as they go to the sixth. Hit to center field, Beltron going back. Right to the warning track, he has room to make the catch. Ugler retired, two away. Time to check in with the studio. Let's go to Chris Carlin for a New York State Smokers quit line game break. All right, Chris, thank you. Here, two out of nobody on on the top of the sixth. Mets with a six to one lead. Jeremy Hermita takes ball one. On the other end of the scale, there's Tim Wakefield, who is what, 24 or 42? So he's 42. He's allowed one hit through six against the Indians. Hit in the air to center field. Another long run back for Beltron. And the ballpark will hold this one as well. Side retired. Maine gets about one, two, three in the top of the sixth inning. Big night for Johnny Maine. He's allowed just one hit. A bigger night for Omer Santos. His first big league home run was a grand slam back in the first. He'll get another turn at bat when the Mets come up in the bottom of the sixth. Come on back.
Mets will be happy if it stays that way. Six to one they lead. John Main is allowed just one hit through six innings. And the Mets will have the lower third of the batting order coming up in the bottom of the sixth. Fernando Tatis, Omir Santos, and then Main. There is action up in the Mets bullpen. Main's throwing 94 pitches tonight. And so we'll see whether he will stay in the game. Tatis has been aboard twice, walked and scored in the first, broke his bat, but singled the center in the third. Tatis getting the start at first base with Delgado out of the lineup. One and one to Tatis. Well, that was John. I'd like to stay in that game. Bottom of the lineup for the Marlins. Give your bullpen a break. And as a starting pitcher, I feel really good when I hand the ball off after seven innings to Putz and Rodriguez. Rolls over one down to third, does Tatis, and Bonifacio with the overhand toss to get him. One away. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Corona. This Cinco de Mayo, be sure to grab some ice cold Corona or Corona Light, the perfect holiday for Mexico's favorite beer. Relax responsibly. By AT&T, switch to the world's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world, delivered. And by Audi. So here is Omer Santos, who hit the grand slam back in the first inning. That turned a two to one game into a six to one game. His first big league home run, his first big league RBIs, and a huge moment for the 27 year old Santos. Slider outside from Sanchez, and it's one and one. We don't have it anymore, but he'd be a prime candidate for Kiner's Corner in the day. Well, Sean Green is up in the bullpen. Daniel Murphy has come out on deck to pinch hit, so it looks like Maine is done. As Sanchez gets ahead on Santos one and two. Is this just a matter of Jerry Manuel trying to get Maine out on a positive note? Yeah, absolutely. He's had a nice effort. Um, and there's Kiko Calero for the Florida Marlins. He's had a nice effort. He's only given up one hit. He's had some real clean innings. Santos goes down. I personally would like to stay in there, but I, I can definitely, you definitely understand what Dan Worth and, and Jerry Manuel are doing. So Maine's night comes to an end. Six innings, one hit, one unearned run. He walked three, he struck out four, and he is in line for his first victory of the season with a five run lead in the sixth inning. And Sean Green will be the first man out of that bullpen. So here's Murphy to pinch hit. Murphy getting the night off tonight, went 0 for 3 yesterday. And uh, Jerry Manuel said he thinks that Murphy is really struggling at the plate right now. Well, the one thing he's been talking about about Murphy is that he was one of the young hitters, one of the only young hitters he ever saw that knew the strike zone on top of the strike zone and knew the strike zone at the bottom. He's able to know, differentiate between a ball that was up and a ball that was down out of the zone. He said the problem's been now that Daniel is starting maybe to get a little frustrated out there in the field, coming to the plate and swinging at a lot of balls up in the strike zone. As you see the pitch count, 101 for Annabelle Sanchez. 1 2 to Murph. Breaking ball lined in a right center for a base hit. Over to try and cut it off. Glowdy can't. It rolls all the way to the bullpen fence. Murphy's going to try for a three base hit. Ugla's relay throw to third. Not in time. A triple for Daniel Murphy as a pinch hitter. This is a ballpark that's going to yield a lot of triples just like that. Well, that was a beautiful swing from Murphy, very level. And that is one of the farthest parts of the park. Just a little hanging curveball, but he jumps all over. That was one of those where he knew he was going for three right out of the box. It's Murphy's first triple this year. He had three last year. You know, the Mets as a team have hit only 11 home runs, and they already have seven triples. Mm. It's like the 1890s. <laughs> so a runner at third with two down. Reyes the only Met regular without a hit tonight. He has a 12 game hitting streak that might be on the line right here. Reyes has grounded out twice and popped up 0 for 3. That's now have eight hits off Sanchez. And the curveball misses. 1-1. One the right fielder, right fielder Gloat, very deep. Cantu playing back at first base. Begging for a drag bunt. Outside two and one. 
Wouldn't you have to play in just against the threat? You got to play at least even with the bag. You got a runner at third and two out. Drag bunt brings home a run. Two and one to Jose. And that one misses outside. Three and one. Alex Cora, remember, is on deck. Castillo came out of the game. We've yet to get a medical report on Louis, who hurt himself running to first base, beating out an infield hit in the fourth. 3 1 from Sanchez, and Reyes takes a strike with a fastball, 3 and 2. Well, that pitch count up now for Sanchez. That's Hanley Ramirez. He also saw the game earlier when Josh Johnson had a nice complete game. He threw 119 pitches in that ball game. Freddie Gonzalez not afraid to push his starters. 3 2 ripped into right field. The gloat is there and he stays with it to make the catch. Has a happy feet for a moment. But Reyes retired after the pinch triple by Murphy to end the inning. So Maine is done. Nine outs for the bullpen to get. Sean Green out of the pen. Mets leading 6-1. The left-hander up in the Marlins bullpen. Meanwhile, the Mets bullpen goes to work here in the seventh. Sean Green comes on to make his tenth appearance of the year. Yeah, with that appearance, Gary, he'll be the third pitch Mets pitcher with double figures with Feliciano and Parnell. You can see those 15 hits and high ERA. A lot of that was in St. Louis when he was in a mop-up role trying to eat some innings against the Cardinals. And then he bounced back against Washington, retired the only batter he faced here on Saturday. Getting Josh Willingham to fly out. Now he faces Cody Ross leading off in the seventh, six to one New York. Ross is 0 for 2, is fouled out twice. And he takes ball one from Green. Alfredo Amezaga to follow. And then the pitcher's spot. So they will bat for Anibal Sanchez, who uh, did some pretty nice work after giving up the six in the first. On most days, that's an Otherwise, Mrs. Lincoln line. <laughs> but sometimes, if you have a bad first and save the bullpen, sometimes you get rewarded for that. Well, you know what it's called? It's called a very professional effort because what you do, you're out there and you give it up early, and your your inkling is, boy, I'm going to be out of this game early. Instead, he took care of the bullpen, stayed out there, got 18 outs for his team. You know, you're thinking about your fans at home about, you know, why is John Main out of the game? And I just kind of quickly said, you know, so he leaves on a good note. What, what happens, I think, for pitching coaches and, and managers with a pitcher that's struggling a little bit, John came in with a seven and a half ERA, is that if you think about it as building blocks and there's five total building blocks, John got to about three today. So you didn't want him to come out in the seventh, give up maybe a two run bomb, and go back down to two, so you have to start to build up again. Stay right at that level three, make a little jump to four the next time, and then get on a roll. 
Bounced over the bag at third. Nice backhand stop by Wright. The long throw gets Cody Ross one down. Hey, what David's throwing has just completely turned around. Well, he seems so confident. Stands up straight and right over the top with a P over there to first base. Again, that inner clock, knowing how long you have. Ross, good runner, not great runner. The accurate throw to Tatis. So one out and nobody on, and now Alfredo Amezaga, who's grounded out and walked 0 for 1. By the way, Maine's earned run average tonight went down from 7.47 to 5.40. You love the early season, don't you? Oh, you do. Two runs, right? Over two runs. Yep. No earned runs allowed by Maine tonight. The only run against him, an unearned run, the result of Sheffield's error back in the first. Mezica grounds one foul. 0 and 2. Dan Meyer continuing to loosen to the bullpen. Brett Carroll has come out on deck to bat for Anibal Sanchez. There's Carroll. Tim Wakefield one hit through seven in Cleveland tonight. But no score in that game. Cliff Lee pitching well for the Indians. That's overdue. Taken low and it's one and two. Boy, Cleveland's a, an enigma, isn't it? Aren't they? I mean, there's a team that everyone thought was going to compete. I mean, it's still early and stuff, but you know. They're seven and 12, but nobody else in that yeah. division's lighting it up either. One, two to Amezaga. Fastball popped up, shallow left. Reyes out, Sheffield in, and Sheffield takes charge and squeezes it for the second out. <laughs> Nothing's routine in that part of this ballpark, is it? No. <laughs> so two out of nobody on, and Brett Carroll will come up to pinch it. Carroll is used quite a bit as a defensive replacement when the Marlins have the lead. He's already saved a game with his glove this year. Just one for ten at the plate. Sheffield making his sixth start in the outfield after not playing there for most of the last couple of years. Green gets head on Carroll with a good sinker, nothing at one. You know, Murphy's had his struggles out there, but what's really interesting, Ronnie, and we heard this over the weekend, and Murph made a couple of nice plays. He made the sliding catch going to the line and the, and the great throw for the double play as Carroll gets into one to deep left field. Sheffield back, and on the warning track, he has room to make the grab. The crowd was very forgiving of Murph. Yes. No sarcastic roar like Sheffield just heard a much more supportive sound when Murphy made a nice play. Seventh inning stretch time at six to one New York. Defense. Mets could have had a lot more, but for some great Marlins defense. Jose Reyes with a fine play as well. But Omer Santos front and center. His first big league home run, a grand slam. That's given the Mets a 6 to 1 lead as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Let's answer our Affleck trivia question. Youngest player to ever win a batting title. He was just 20 years old. 
1955 the great Al Kaline never hit that high again 341 is that what it was I don't know what he hit I think it was 341 could be wrong 340 off by a point there's second in the MVP voting in the American League that year Yogi Berra won one of his three MVPs that year in 1955. Danny Meyer in the game left hander for the Florida Marlins. This is his ninth game. He has been very good out of that bullpen a bullpen that has struggled this season so far. Dayton hop was good in yesterday's game Lindstrom has been up and down three saves and five opportunities and one point the Marlins bullpen while they were going 11 and one had a 25 inning scoreless streak but before that the Mets saw that bullpen and it was lacking in certain areas and Meyer was part of that and since then they've blown a couple of leads late most glaringly Matt Lindstrom getting torched for seven ninth inning runs against the Phillies. We saw JJ puts up in the Mets bullpen Alex Cora up for the first time as we go to the bottom of the seven. Cora came on for Luis Castillo at second base after Castillo appeared to hurt himself running out an infield single in the fourth. We've yet to hear a medical report on Louis. Carlos Beltran on deck and then Gary Sheffield in the bottom of the seven. K-line Gary he didn't certainly didn't have the career that Stan the man had but has the same kind of honor in Detroit doesn't he that Stan the man has in St. Louis. Yeah, he played his entire career with one team as Cora grounds out to Ugla for the first out. It's funny because you were talking about how K-line never hit that high again I'm thinking about Norm Cash. Norm Cash had the year I think it was 61 he had three over 360 yeah. and uh, never I don't think he ever hit over 300 after that. Came more of a home run hitter after that. Well, here's Beltron who homered against Meyer down in Florida in that first series of the year. Beltron one for three today. Now it's a 10 game hitting streak. And dating back to last year, Carlos has now been on base in 24 straight games. Leading the National League in batting right now at 403. Around it to the left side, and Mezziger runs around it on the forehand and just nips Beltron at first base for the second out. So two away. It'd be hard to hit 400, wouldn't it? It's too many pitchers. You know, I mean, you're going to face three, four, five pitchers in a game. Sometimes you can face four pitchers in your five at bats every night. You know, it's interesting because. We talked so often about the offensive explosion in baseball over the last 15, 20 years, but it's been about runs and it's been about home runs. Yeah. It hasn't necessarily been about batting average. I mean, nobody's hit 400 for a full season of the big leagues in 68 years. Sheffield, and he pops one up. Foul third base side. Bonifacio leaning. Can't lean far enough. Well, he couldn't lean far enough because one of his teammates wouldn't get up and get out of the way. It's funny. Watch this. I don't know who his teammate is, but I should point him out. Just you got to get out of the way, brother. That looks like Ricky Nolasco is doing the chart. Can't drop the clipboard. Yeah, that's right. Can't drop the clipboard. If it, <laughs> if it lands in like some tobacco juice on the floor of the clubhouse. The other reason you want to get out of the way because if he doesn't. Catch it. Sometimes it hits you right in the noggin. Oh, and one to Sheffield. I guess the best chases of 400 that I can remember were George Brett, yes, who hit 390, 390. and um, Tony, Tony Gwynn, Gwynn hit yeah. 388. John Olerud hit over 400 for a long stretch with Toronto. I think into August. Yeah. One year. He was so good in those days and they had a great lineup around him also so you couldn't pitch around him. But I could I personally could not get him out. There was nothing he would throw because he had such a great eye. Right. So if you threw anything off the strike zone he would just take it. 
Well, he had that one year with the Mets, Olaru, where he hit 354, best ever for a Met in a single season. Two and two now to Sheffield. I pitched a game in Toronto when I was with Oakland, and pitched a good game. Was winning. The only guy who got to me all day was Olaru. He was three for three. So on his fourth at bat, Walt Weiss came in and said, "I said, Walt, what should I throw him? You tell me what sequence of pitches, so maybe I'll get him out." I said Ronnie, you cannot get him out. The best thing you can do is take the ball and throw it in the gap. At least he doesn't hit a home run. <laughs> I go, thanks for the help, Walt. Go back out there for it. I hope he hits a BB at you. And what happened? Uh, another hit. Four hits that day. Four for four. <laughs> Three and two to Sheffield with David Wright on deck. Two out and nobody on. And Chef takes on the inside corner strike three called in like the call by Dale Scott who's had a big strike zone all day. And the Mets go out one two three against Dan Meyer in the bottom of the seventh. J.J. Putz will be on to pitch the eighth against the top of the Marlins order still six to one. The Mets at Mets.com browse the largest selection of authentic team gear, including clubhouse caps and T-shirts, jerseys, collectibles, and more. Get your team gear straight from the source. Shop the Mets.com shop. Two more games to go in this series. There are your probable pitchers: Levon Hernandez against Ricky Nolasco in tomorrow night's game, and then a marquee matchup Wednesday afternoon: Johan Santana against Josh Johnson, round two. That's an afternoon game on Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Jeremy Reed comes in to play left field. He will bat ninth and on to pitch is J.J. Putz who will hit in Sheffield's number four spot. Interesting, right? Uh, in this instance, we're winning 6-1, to one, but not taking any chances. Want to build some momentum. Jerry Manuel wants to build some momentum for his Mets. Emilio Bonifacio leads off the eighth inning, and he takes a strike, and you know, Putz and K-Ron have not worked since That's Friday right. in Santana's game, so... With a couple of days of rest, you might as well use your big guys. Line in a right field, a base hit for Bonifacio. So puts is greeted by a leadoff hit, and John Baker will come up. You know, I've noticed a pattern with you, Bobby. What is that? You tend to be. A little bit self-effacing. With what? Well, you said that you couldn't get John Olerud out. We looked up the numbers. John Olerud's lifetime batting average against you was 219. Really? Yeah. Seven for 32. No, it wasn't 219 that day. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> 219. That that really shocks me. It really does. I don't think you remember how good you were. I don't know. <laughs> but it made for a great book. It did good book and it made for a good uh, made for a good day there in Toronto. They had some good hitters there. Paul Molitor, Joe Carter, Bobby Alomar, Devon White. Yep. They used to call him Whamco. White, Alomar, Molitor, 
Carter and Olaru. Those are the top five in Cito Gaston's batting order. And Cito never changed the lineup. That's right. It's the same same lineup every day. When they were winning championships in 92 and 93. Baker has walked twice and grounded out 0 for 1. Lowered in the third spot of the order. If you joined us late, Hanley Ramirez hit by a pitch on his right hand in the first inning. The hand is sore, but they x rayed it, no break. And there's Hanley with his right hand wrapped in the Marlins' dugout. I would doubt he's going to play tomorrow. Two and one to Baker. Two and two. Now Robbie Alomar hit 358 against you. <laughs> I knew that too. <laughs> 19 for 53. Well, I know for Mets fans they saw a different Robbie, but boy, when he was in Toronto, he was the best in Cleveland, the best player in the game. Yep. Well, I know the Met fans may blanch at this thought, but to me, he's an automatic Hall of Famer. I agree. Hall of Famer when I played against him. 2 2. Ground ball. Puts, knocks it down with his bare hand and recovers to throw on Baker. Well, that's a reaction play by Puts. And he appears to be all right. Well, you never want to do that, but it's just, the, you know, the competitive nature. Is to try to make a play. But you know puts it so big there's probably a dent in the ball by the time it got to his hand. Well the trainer Ray Ramirez is going to come out to make sure and puts pointing to his uh, the base of his hand. Rather than the palm. Yeah that's the thickest part of your hand so that's. Much better place to catch it. But the problem is when you reach for it if you catch it on the fingers that's right. where you can really run into a problem. I don't think uh, I don't think much bothers him. <laughs> no. He's got a tremendous dry wit. He's just uh, you get the impression he's a real tower of strength. There's Ken Ta Takahashi, the newest Met, and when uh, when Takahashi makes his first appearance as a Met, if he does, he will be the third oldest player in history to make his major league debut. He's 40 years old signed with the Blue Jays got let go this spring Mets picked him up and they brought him up after yesterday's game. Here's Ross Glode and Glode lifts one down the left field line. Headed toward the stands and that's a foul ball. I was sitting next to. Jerry Manuel and JJ puts during the. Welcome home dinner for the Mets. And they brought out the salad and they brought out the meal which was a filet and potatoes and. Puts looked at Jerry Manuel. He said, "Is this all they give you here in New York, Jerry?" <laughs> he was ready for round two. <laughs> it was a big dessert, as I recall. <laughs> <laughs> Glowed has flied out twice since coming on. 0 for two, and he lists this one foul, and that'll go out of play. It's always surreal when we when I do that welcome home dinner with you Gary because I participated as a player for all those many years and I see all these young guys doing the dinner now and it just boy it's only a few things remind me of my youth here and seeing those guys all dressed up at such a young age is uh, very interesting and it's especially interesting for the guys who are with the team for the first time. Yeah. As I, I sat next to Jeremy Reed at that dinner, and I said, uh, "You ever have anything like this in Seattle?" He said, no. <laughs> "I mean, there are thousands of people this, there. This was a bright lights, big city moment." <laughs> so the Phillies have tied up the Nats. Jimmy Rollins an RBI double to get that game back even, seven-seven.
puts ahead on Glode one and two with a runner at second and one out. And the breaking ball stays high and. I'm not sure if that one fooled Santos. Jorge Cantu on deck. He has the only RBI for the Marlins tonight. Florida has just two hits. Cantu had the only one off Maine, and then Bonifacio's hit against Puts leading off here in the eighth. 2 2. Just got a piece of that splitter or fastball. Fouled it off. Two two. Pops this one foul. Not to go out of play. Load getting his money's worth against puts. Load had a couple of at bats against puts in the American League. One for two against him. Jason Bay just homered in the ninth for the Red Sox to break that scoreless tie. Three nothing Boston in Cleveland. They are on a roll, man. Going for their eleventh straight win tonight. And since the trade, getting him and sending Manny Ramirez to Los Angeles, how many big hits did Jason Bay get? Had a big hit the other night against Rivera. He's like the anti-Manny. Yeah. I mean, can you think of anybody more opposite than Manny Ramirez? Then Jason Bay. Just in terms of personality yeah. and presence. Three two to Glode. And he bounces that one foul. Eight pitches now from puts to Glode and they're still going. Wakefield worked seven in that game, allowed just the one hit. Manny Del Carmen pitched the eighth. And now sure Papel Bond will come on for the bottom of the ninth. Also started out two and six remember yep. before their 10 straight win. Again the three two and again it's fouled off. The other thing is if you win 10 straight games in April you would expect to be in first place. But Toronto has surprised everybody. They've won six straight series. What is Mr. Holiday now four and one already. Yep. Toronto playing in Kansas City tonight and trailing 2 1 in the fourth. Facing Mr. Bannister. He the, pitched well his first start. He did. No runs in six innings. This will be the tenth pitch of the at bat to Ross Glode. And he walked him. Well, that's quite an at bat for Ross Glode. He works out the walk from puts, and the Marlins have two men on. Time to check in with the studio. Chris Carlin is waiting. New York State Smokers quit line game break. It's quite a ball game. Phillies coming off the sweep of the Marlins over the weekend. Just a game and a half behind Florida after the Marlins got off to that 11 to 11 and one start. Well, here's Cantu with two on and one out, and he takes a strike. Cantu single the center to drive in a run the first, was called out on strikes in the third, and then hit a bullet at Reyes, who snagged it on the seat of his pants on a hop and threw him out in the sixth. JJ puts does not pitch as though he's in any hurry. <laughs> yeah, it seems like he wants everything just to be right before he delivers that ball to the plate. One and one to Cantu. 
Well, CC Sabathia took another loss tonight. Tigers beat the Yankees four to two behind Justin Verlander, who had really been struggling. Detroit's in first place. Now eleven and eight. In that American League Central. One one. Cantu lifts one to right, chasing Church back a few strides. He's there. That's the second out. Bonifacio tags. It will easily go to third. But now there are two away. So Dan Uggla will come to the plate. Uggla 0 for 3 tonight, struck out twice and hit one to pretty deep center field that Beltron caught. John Main went six innings, allowed an unearned run on only one hit, walked three and struck out four. Sean Green pitched a 1 2 3 seventh and puts trying to negotiate the eighth, having given up a single and a walk and taken a ground ball off his bare hand. Now takes on Uggla with first and third and two out. Hit the shortstop right at Reyes. Side retired. So puts works around trouble in the eighth. We head for the bottom of the eighth. David Wright to lead things off with the Mets up six to one. The fans are enjoying a Monday night and enjoying a six to one Met lead as we head for the bottom of the eighth inning. Time for our Dunkin' Donuts Ask the Booth. Jim from Basking Ridge wants to know, Ronnie, during your playing days, who did you go to for advice when you were struggling? That's a really good question, Jim. I think, uh, you know, what's interesting about those mid-80s teams is that all the pitchers, except for Dwight, really, were about the same age. So I think we all helped each other, you know, really led by Mel Stottlemyre, who was really not only a pitching coach, but kind of a father figure to all of us but we were a really close unit we used to uh, bet on who got the most hits who drove in the most runs who got the most bunts down but also during the game you could go to them and say hey listen he looks like he's turning on that ball inside what's it look like to you and they give you the advice and let you know so it was a great group of pitchers to grow up with and I'm sure Seaver felt the same way when he was with Coos and Ryan and Gentry and all those guys Walker was their pitching coach back in that era Renio Pinto on to pitch the bottom of the eighth inning and David Wright takes ball one David one for three had an RBI single back in the first. And Francisco Rodriguez getting ready to pitch the ninth inning not a safe situation but again he hasn't pitched since Friday. When he got a save but also gave up a two run homer in that game to Jesus Flores. Hit 
Alberto misses inside two and one. So Freddie Gonzalez running both of his lefties out there out of the bullpen. Dan Meyer worked a one two three seventh and now Pinto pitching the eighth. Well, uh, because of the game yesterday, they had to pitch Baden Hop. They pitched Hayden Penn a couple of innings. They're right-handers. Well, I, I said both their lefties. They they do have another lefty. That would be Cody Ross. Cody Ross. Now, <laughs> you saw Cody Ross pitch yesterday in person. What he he was unbelievable. He threw 83 mile an hour fastball, which was faster than Jamie Moyer, who got the win <laughs> in the game, and he had a good curveball and changeup. Right hits one to center field. Ross going back. Going back, warning track near the wall, and he can't make this play. It bounces away, right on his way to third. It's recovered by Hermida, and Wright pulls into third base with a triple. First triple of the year for David Wright, the Mets' second triple of the night. Well, it's going to be part of David that says, how far do I have to hit it to get it out of this ballpark? Ross kind of loses his way here, just over his glove. And it bounced off his body at a weird angle. I thought at one time if it got away enough that David was going to be able to circle the bases. David's played here long enough to know not to take anything for granted. So he was running all the way. Well. The Mets triple total is now at eight. Well that ball is middle middle. And the great thing about it. Ryan Church rips one foul. Jerry Manuel, like a seer, telling us today that he thinks David's really got close to getting out of his slump. Got a base hit to right field, and now this long one to center field. Mets now have eight triples and 11 home runs. Sam Crawford days. When the, when the triples catch up to the home runs, and maybe when they move the fences in. <laughs> Although I have to tell you. You know, I know the hitters have to be frustrated. And anybody who hits home runs for a living is going to get frustrated playing in this ballpark. It's great for the game. I think it's a great game to watch with all the expanse out there in the outfield. Infield in for Church, who takes inside two and one. Defensively in the outfield, it's a premium now. Tatis on deck. Saw Cody Ross make a great play going away on Sheffield in the third. This one hit a little further and he just couldn't quite make the play. Two and one to Church is one for three on the night. He lifts it to center. That'll get the run in. Right tagging at third as Ross makes the grab. Right heads home. Ross throws his change up <laughs> and right scores on the sacrifice fly by Ryan Church and it's seven to one New York. Eighth run by the end of the season for Ryan Church. So the Mets now with a six run lead and here's Fernando Tatis. who's had a walk and a broken bat single tonight one for two. You don't know just how serious the injury is to Carlos Delgado. Carlos was a late scratch tonight. After uh, hurting his hip while sliding into third base on a triple yesterday so. Maybe Tatis gets uh, more than one day playing first base. Until Delgado's ready. I wonder if they think about because of Castillo, we don't know how much he's hurt. Tatis at second base and Sheffield getting some at bats at first base. Not, I have not seen Sheffield doing any work down at first base. I haven't either. And he came up, of course, as an infielder, but on the left side. As he can play Cora at second base and Tatis at first if you want to go that way. 0 2, taking high 1 and 2. And with a right hander going tomorrow in Alaska and after a good pinch hit at bat by Daniel Murphy tonight. Yeah. You'd have to assume that Murphy's going to be back in the lineup tomorrow. How about that guy, Homer Santos, waiting on deck? Uh, I think he's probably earned another day behind the plate as well. He might be playing every day. Well, I mean, it's certainly a message that's being sent right now by Santos and by Jerry Manuel. Here's Schneider on the disabled list and Ramon Castro can't get into a game. One two low and outside two and two. Well you know Jerry said that he's in there because he wants to evaluate Santos. But really he's in there because he feels he gives them the best shot to win right now. And what does that say about Castro. Mm. No. Two two to Tatis lifted to shallow left. On comes Hermita. 
And yeah, there are two away. I mean, this was going to be a, a big year for Ramon Castro, and it may yet be. Yes. This was the year that he proved that he could get in shape, stay healthy all year, be a contributing member of the team when they needed him the most. A quick opportunity presents itself with Schneider going on the disabled list, but here's a guy who's barely played in the big leagues who comes up and, for the moment at least, is getting the playing time. You know, sometimes what happens is that, you know, you got a young kid up being hungry. Is really good in this league. And that's what Santos is. He's hungry. He knows he's got a shot here. He's got to make the most of it. So his attention to detail is probably as good as anyone on the team. And the other side of it, as we look at Santos's grand slam, his first major league home runs and RBIs. He made a two to one game into a six to one game. The other side of it is that competition within a ball club. That could be a good thing. Broken back grinder out to a Mezaga who makes the running throw and catch who just got back to the bag to end the inning. Mets tack on a run on the right triple and the church sack fly. We go to the ninth. It's seven to one. Chris Carlin and former Met Bobby Ojeda for all of today's highlights, exclusive interviews, and Jerry Manuel's post game reactions. It's all on Lincoln Mercury Post Game Live immediately after today's game and now after all 162 Met games only on SNY. Well, the Mets family lost one of its favorite people on Saturday when Joe Costello passed away. Joe worked at Shea for 37 years. He was a member of the grounds crew, among other things. And one of our tape operators here. In our truck for SNY, Ken Romano is Joe's uh, nephew. And so our condolences to, to Ken and the entire family on the passing of Joe Costello. Jeremy Hermida leads off in the ninth inning against Francisco Rodriguez in a non save situation. And K Rod misses with a changeup to start him off ball one. Hermida tonight 0 for 3, struck out. Fouled out and flied out to center. And that's two straight changeups. That's two and oh. I guess when you have a six run lead, you could work on things. Don't work on too many things. There's the fastball, but now it's three and oh. I'm going to tell you about these kind of games is that the other team is ready to lay down and die. The only way they can come back in these games if you have a few walks then you give up a couple of clinkers and the next thing you know you got a guy up with a chance to tie the game so good to go right after him throw strikes. There you see the numbers on K Rod only his eighth appearance. It's low on this bullpen staff. <laughs> it's three and two to Hermita. Uh, top of the eighth, Nick Johnson just homered in Philadelphia. Nats nine, Philly seven. That's been quite an affair, a Citizens Bank Park special. Uh -huh. 
Three and two to Hermida leading off the ninth. And that just missed ball four. And so Hermida draws a leadoff walk. It's five walks for Matt pitching tonight. Main walk three puts one, and now Krod walks one. And that'll bring up Cody Ross. Ross was is 0 for 3. David Wright made a fine play on the backhand and threw him out in the seventh. Coming in for ball one. Well, the Mets will take a lot of positives out of this game. David Wright with two hits, an RBI, and a triple. Nice bounce back game for David. Of course, Omir Santos and his grand slam. But going forward, probably the most important thing that happened tonight was John Maynard. Yes. out. He looked great. Very aggressive. Six more than quality innings. One hit and an unearned run against Maine's record tonight. Pulled down to third, right on the backhand. Goes to second, short hop by Cora. What a play! Outstanding on both ends. David Wright with a quick backhand pickup and the quicker throw. And then the pickup at second by Cora for the force play one away. Well, he knew that he could not go to first. So throwing off balance, one hop to Cora. A nice pick by Alex at second base. Hermita with the hustle to second. Let's watch this slide. Boy. Surprised that uh, Mr. Gonzalez didn't come out on this because it looks like he might have got him in there before the throw. Let's see. Was his foot over the bag though or on the bag? I think that's the only question because he was certainly there before the ball. Well, that's closer than I thought from that angle, definitely. Here's a man who with one out and one on. He takes ball one. Just a beautiful play. And Frank Cisco Rodriguez appreciates it, right? Frankie giving out the kudos yeah. all the way around. Mezuga is 0 for 2 in a walk. Yeah, he takes a strike. 1 and 1. You know, Gary, we've talked about the positive. The Mets hold on here, which they should. The other positive, I think, the more at bats he gets, Sheffield looks more and more comfortable at the plate. Well, he had one hit tonight and certainly looked like he was going to have two. Good off speed pitch by Rodriguez, 1 and 2. Cody Ross made a great play to rob Sheffield of an extra base hit. Like to see that. You know, a lot of veteran players, when they're taken out of the game, they will go in the locker room, take a shower. He stayed on the bench. And a great teammate, so. Yeah, that's pro's pro. One, two. Struck him out. Francisco Rodriguez gets Alfredo Amezigo two away. Yeah, Mezzigo looking at Rodriguez, and that look was seven to one game. You're going to throw change ups? How about challenging me? Well, he doesn't have to challenge you if you're going to swing at the ball in the dirt. Let's check in with Kevin. Guys, just a quick update just so you know for uh, the game ends here. Louis Castillo muscle spasms in his back, so I think that's probably good news. And I think it happened when he actually hit the bag, kind of hit it with his heel and kind of jammed something. Uh, so that, that's probably good news for Castillo. It certainly looked like he was in pain at the time, but that's certainly treatable. Now Wes Helms will pinch it with the Marlins down to their final out, and Helms takes a strike. Helms hitting at 227. The veteran clubhouse leader for this Marlins team. Ross at first with two down. The Marlins have had two hits all night. Ross takes off. Check swing. He went around. That's the second strike. No stolen base. Defensive indifference moves Ross to second. Good slider here from Rodriguez. Thirty-eight thousand five hundred and seventy-three on hand at City Field tonight. Up in K. Roy can put an end to things. Done is homer. It's 11 to 7, Washington in the eighth. O2 
2. the way. You think um, when hitters take a road trip now <laughs> to New York and Philadelphia that they might just be looking forward to swinging the bat in that second half of the trip? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And that's it. Does not even enjoy going down the turnpike to Philadelphia. Oh, we'll get that chance next weekend. Mike Pelfrey against Chanhol Park in the series mm. opener Friday night. Home run hitter Chanhol Park. <laughs> oh, and two to Helms. Off the corner. One and two. Red Sox won that game, beat Cleveland three to one. Eleven straight wins now for Boston. Ross at second and two down. Low and away with a curveball, two and two. Bonifacio would be next. That scored six in the first inning, and they've been holding the lead ever since. Here I'm trying to register the final strike. All the way, Helms hanging tough. This will be the eighth pitch of the at bat to Helms. And it's ball four. And so the Marlins have two men on. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by IOTV. Get the best in HD free with IOTV. By City. City never sleeps. By Pella Windows, the Mets official window and door replacement company. Call 1 866 64 Pella for special savings today. By Sponge Tech, America's cleaning company, and by Toyota. So, two walks in the ninth inning from Francisco Rodriguez in a non save situation to the Marlins with a sliver of a chance in the ninth. Here's Emilio Bonifacio, and he takes a strike. Bonifacio, one for four. Scored a run back in the first after reaching on Sheffield's error. That Accounted for the only Marlin run of the game. Two on and two out, ninth inning. And Bonifacio swings and misses at the changeup. And now again, the Marlins are down to their last strike. A combined two hitter for John Main and three relievers. And the Mets take the opening game of the series for Florida and the Marlins their second.